Asus's original Zenfone 2 was one of our favorite mid-range smartphones of 2015, thanks to the unprecedented value it brought to the table. With yet another variant, Asus is maintaining its focus on affordability while still offering very respectable specifications. This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and this is my full review of the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser. The Zenfone 2 Laser looks a lot like the original. It has the same 5.5 inch screen size, same ergonomically pleasing curve, and overall could be easily mistaken for the original. That's not to say that the phone's design is without a few minor differences of course. In addition to the unsurprising addition of a laser autofocus, you can now swap out the battery. There's also access to dual micro SIM card slots as well as a micro SD card expansion slot. Although the Zenfone 2 Laser is certainly still in phablet territory, its dramatic curve and flat edges make it both easy and comfortable to hold with a single hand. Despite this, Asus's tab center power button placement is still, well, annoying to say the least. Thankfully, double tap to wake and sleep are still here as part of Zen Motion, among other gestures. The power button is undeniably difficult to reach nonetheless, but it does feel more tactile than it did on the original. Oddly enough, this comes at the expense of feeling cheaper, which is also extended to the volume buttons. On the top of the device, you'll find a 5 megapixel front facing camera on the right, as well as a notification LED to the left. There's also three non illuminated standard capacitive keys on the bottom, just above Asus's signature metallic chin. The Zenfone's bezels are a bit large compared to other devices, but that's not that big of a deal once you actually start using it. Overall, the Zenfone 2 Laser is one of the best built and designed devices in its price category. Asus has no trouble pulling off a premiumness often reserved for more expensive devices, even with the laser's all plastic construction. While some may frown upon Asus's use of a recycled design, we feel that the design here is more than adequate. The Zenfone 2 Laser's 5.5 inch 1080p IPS display looks about the same as it did on the original. It has excellent viewing angles, great color reproduction, and overall it just looks really good. We do wish that the panel was a bit brighter, however, as sunlight readability is sadly just as poor as it was on the original. Auto brightness also tends to be a bit conservative, even with the adaptive brightness slider set on maximum. The splendid color settings that Asus has added are definitely a nice touch, despite the display's already great color calibration. It's also nice to see a blue light filter toggle available straight from the notification shade, which makes the display easier to read in darker environments. Finally, Asus took the opportunity to upgrade the display's glass from Corning Gorilla Glass 3 to 4, a seemingly small but very welcome change, especially for the price. Powered by the Snapdragon 615, the Zenfone 2 Laser makes a somewhat surprising switch from x86 to ARM. As expected, the benchmark scores are a bit lower on the Zenfone 2 Laser, but day-to-day -day performance is about the same. Most apps launch fairly quickly, and there's minimal lag throughout. While the laser does have a marginally less powerful processor, it does receive a bump up to 3GB of RAM from the original base model's 2GB. That's great to see, especially when we still have some $200 phones shipping with just 1GB of RAM. Coupled with the Adreno 405, gaming performance was pretty good on the Zenfone 2 laser. I was able to play games like Asphalt 8 Airborne with little noticeable lag, even on high. With support for 802.11n Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth 4.0, the Zenfone 2 Laser offers all of the connectivity options you'd expect. It is missing NFC, however, which is a bit unfortunate considering that the original Zenfone 2 had it. What the original didn't have, though, was Band 12 support for T-Mobile 4G LTE users. This time around, Asus is launching their unlocked, dual-SIM device with full HSPA Plus and full 4G LTE support within the US. The Zenfone 2 Laser is available with either 16 or 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but you can always expand that with a micro SD card up to an additional 128 gigabytes. Asus seems to have used the same rear speaker found on the original for the Zenfone 2 Laser. While sound quality is about average, the maximum volume is still too low for some environments. Battery life was also close to the same on the Zenfone 2 Laser, with the same 3000mAh battery capacity. 
I was able to get an average of about three and a half hours of screen on time with 18 hours of usage. When I did use it more heavily, however, I was able to get just over four hours of screen on time with 14 hours of use. While there doesn't seem to be much of an improvement over the original's mediocre battery life, ASUS does now give you the opportunity to swap out the battery if needed. The 13 megapixel rear camera on the Zenfone 2 laser is now accompanied by a laser autofocus. The laser autofocus does seem to help the phone focus on specific objects, and some images were noticeably sharper on the laser in comparison to the original. With the exception of better sharpness and detail, however, images appear to be about the same. There's still a lack of dynamic range, but unlike with the original, HDR now often makes things worse. The camera is certainly capable of producing great images, but it is held back quite a bit due to this issue. Low light performance on the Zenfone 2 laser was also similar to the original in that we were able to get some decent looking images, even in darker environments. While there is still a lot of digital noise added with ASUS's image processing, it's one of the best low light cameras that we've encountered for the price. ASUS's low light mode also helps quite a bit at the expense of resolution, but we should note that additional digital noise seems to be inevitable. ZenUI's camera app offers a good amount of manual control in addition to over a dozen individual shooting modes. They're fun to play around with, and the professional mode is excellent for those wanting a bit more control. The Zenfone 2 laser is running ASUS's ZenUI over Android 5.0 Lollipop. The software experience remains primarily unchanged from the original, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. While we can't cover every aspect of the software, we will say that ASUS has done an exceptional job in adding value through the software experience. Virtually everything is well thought out, and ASUS has been very good about filling in the gaps in stock Lollipop. It definitely follows a design language of its own, but the overall experience is one of the best you'll find. From the customizable quick access apps on the lock screen, to the many customizable gestures available with Zenmotion, ZenUI offers a good amount of room for customization. There's also many features like RAM cleanup, play to support, several power saving modes with automatic or scheduled switching, an auto start manager, an audio equalizer, a built in backup and restore app that actually includes app data, FM radio, a surprisingly good mobile video editing app, a quick memo app, a sound recorder app, a themes manager with support for custom fonts and icons within the default launcher, thank you very much, an easy mode, a kids mode, a one handed mode, a glove mode, and finally, frequent ASUS app updates through the Google Play Store. Speaking of apps, we can't talk about ZenUI without talking about bloatware. While ASUS has reduced the amount of pre-installed apps by a fair amount, there's still a lot of unnecessary and redundant additions. Apps like Clean Master, Doctor Safety, Zen Circle, and Zen Talk are included out of the box, with the latter two being unable to be uninstalled. With that said, ASUS has made some of their apps, most notably their Link series, installable through the Google Play Store rather than pre-installing them out of the box. There's also a good amount of apps which have been moved into the settings menu, reducing the amount of scrolling required in app launchers. Although it does ship with Android 5.0 Lollipop, we are nearly certain that this device will receive Android 6.0 Marshmallow sometime during the first half of 2016. ASUS has one of the best track records for keeping their products updated. For example, the Zenfone 5, which launched in early 2014, shipped with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, was updated to Android 4.4 KitKat, and then to Android 5.0 Lollipop. That kind of software support is difficult to find in even some flagship Android smartphones nowadays, and may just be the key selling point for some Android enthusiasts. Starting at $199, the Zenfone 2 laser is priced competitively. If 16GB isn't enough, there's also a 32GB model, available for $249. Just to be clear, the model that we're reviewing here is the ZE5 51KL. There are many models of the Zenfone 2 laser available depending on the region, so we suggest that you carefully review specification lists before making any purchases. Although the Zenfone 2 laser's display could be brighter, battery life could be better, and speaker could be louder, ASUS still offers a very competitive option in the sea of cheap Android smartphones. The great display, exceptional software experience and support, and bonuses like Gorilla Glass 4 and 3GB of RAM are enough to make this one of our favorite smartphones for under $200. Thank you for watching this video and please make sure to give it a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it. Also, please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content. Finally, make sure to visit the Android Authority website for additional coverage as we are your source for all things Android.